Welcome YouTubers, it's the Flying Ross and I bring you Europa Universal 4. I tried to make some videos about this and I really didn't know how to go about it. So, here it is, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I figured I'll do a quick intro. Now, a quick intro to this might take a little bit of time. But I'm going to go over basically how to start a game and go over important aspects to what you need to know and hopefully it helps you out okay so first here is our map and it is massive and it's the entire world okay um i'm playing as austria right now i have already played uh, an entire 400 years that you can do from 1444 to 1820 so it's not quite 400 years as spain um i played about 300 as france and then i fucked up and uh and probably you know very fast uh, fucked myself over and then also I do have one of my games as the Ottoman Empire right now which I am uh, quite enjoying but it actually has its own um, challenges now the Ottoman Empire France and uh, Spain are supposed to be supposedly the three starter countries England also is uh, pretty easy supposedly um, I think England France and Spain are Castile are easy for a new someone new to you know readily expand um, because of the colonization that you can get but you have to be careful is that there's a lot of things in this game that will fuck you over um, some of the main things I will go over here here but let's not get ahead of myself so here's your main map obviously uh, the detail here on the terrain is obviously pretty cool you can see different buildings, the cities, and this is a trade avenue right there. Um, but here is the the, the map uh, and ma a mode that I like. This shows you the borders and everything. Um, shows you territory that you take over and stuff. So, I mean, here's trade maps. And this, I have absolutely no idea. I really don't. I mean, obviously the arrows are going to the trade nodes. It's showing you where trade's coming from. It shows you what countries are in each trade node. Why you would necessarily need to know that. I mean, eh, not too much. Um, here is the imperial map mode. And this is important for the, for these countries, especially Austria, uh, to actually get this holy Roman Empire. And that's why I'm starting this, is the idea to actually try to unlock this and actually get this all united as one under the holy Roman Empire. Um, we'll see how likely that is. Um... It's going to be uh, difficult. Uh, this is your religious map. Uh, obviously, we have Catholics. And uh, this is uh, Sunni. And the Sh uh, Sunni and Shiites are down here. Um, here is... Uh, this is Orthodox Christian. You're g they're going to have other uh, religions pop up throughout time. Uh, almost in, uh, in order. And here's your diplomatic map. As you can see, uh, well, I guess we were, we were somewhat allied. Or do we just think that's ours? Either way, right now it's the beginning of the game. Here's a, my piece of merit in my territory over here. So, so I got a little piece over here. I got a piece over here. Brand new game. Okay, missions. Missions. This is the first one. Form alliance with Bur uh, Burgundy. Okay. So you can get 10 prestige, 25 diplomatic power. Here is secure the imperial border. Uh, this is, what's it? Um, world marriage with Burgundy and Burgundy's opinion of Australia at least 100. Okay. So. So we can do this one right here, and then right here we're negative two, so we can get two, you go down here to di uh, Dynasty, World Marriage, Send, and right off the bat we're going to get Diplomatic, go to World Marriage, you see right there. Pause is your friend, which is Space, plus and minus is your, um, what do you call it? Uh, Ok, 
Okay, now Burgundy's uh, opinion of Austria at least 100. Okay, that's the next thing. So we'll go over to Burgundy, diplomatic, okay. Their opinion right now is 49. Uh, alliance with Tier, Trier. Lines of Palestine. I don't know. I'm gonna accept them. There, these are a lot of small nations in here, as you can see. These are all little small, like city states almost. Um, and uh, the first one I think we're gonna have to go after is uh, Bavaria, which will cause us some issues. Um, here is your advisors. You'll have a little notification. You have free advisors. They do cost money, and you can look uh, look up here if you highlight over treasury. It shows you how much money uh, that you have, and also how much money you earn. Right now, we earn 2.11 gold per hour. Um, this is an issue, though, because well, this each one of these cost if the lowest one costs one gold a month. So it's you know four gold a month for this one and nine gold for up there uh, this is gonna be right here we have a gold mine and as you can see we have gold at 3.6 a month and then gold though affects us this way as if you can look at inflation right here current inflation is at 0.01 percent and it's not at zero percent is because we are depending on um, uh, see right there it is increased by 0.15 from our reliance on gold mines okay so since if you have gold mines now if you have gold mines and it's making you extra income it won't count against you but since we are we are literally counting our uh, off of uh, your entire nation's budget off of gold basically we get inflation advisors here's the uh, this is the diplomatic advisor Oh no, administrative advisor. And you can see admin tech, missionary, national tax modifier, which will add some money. Uh, this is diplomatic, global trade power. Uh, this right here is also where you can get the negative inflation, which is not too much. It's negative point uh, one zero, but it helps out a lot. And here's your military. We'll go over technology as well. Here's technology tree, and you can see right up here. It's your Western technology. Right now, we are Western tech, so technologies are 100% of normal. If you go over to technologies like the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, let's see if I can get in here. They have uh, the Ottoman technology group, Ottoman. Now, it's not showing you this, but it's 125%. So they have 25% extra they need to do for each research. Uh, this is Muslim. I think Muslim has 150 and so forth. And uh, I think the Chinese, for just, you know, relation, Chinese is at 175% of normal. Once you get technology levels, especially like uh, admin level 4, will unlock national ideas. National ideas, again, uh, break down under admin, diplo, and military. Now, these points right here, as you can see right here, 65 admin points, uh, 104 diplomatic, 52 military. These get spent here. So like this one right here, foreign embassies, to get an extra diplomat would cost me probably 400 diplomatic score. But you have to remember, you have to balance this back and forth because you still need to have right here, this is base cost for the next level, 600. So these increases right now at user joined your channel. Hello. But yeah, so the we're earning eight a month right now, five a month on admin and uh, four a month on military power. So those those points that you earn at four a month would take you four hundred months. Uh, to earn four, you know, well, not four, 40, sorry. No. Oh. Well, 100 months, yeah, 100 months, sorry, one, uh, math, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. 100 months to earn 400, uh, 400, okay? So, yeah, so there's your short on technology. And now here's your armies, 
And we'll zoom up, zoom up on here, not just to, you know, but show you. If you highlight, it can show you the breakdown right away. You have 26,000 men, 10,000 is the uh, horsemen, and zero cannons. Uh, regiments, it shows you you have 26, 10. Now, where that will come in important is you can have 26 uh, regiments, but you might only have like 13,000 men. And that's where manpower comes into effect is how fast you can actually reinforce that those regiments. Um, here is a breakdown on this panel. Quick on the, these panels, here's some special abilities. If you can get actually the force march, which is in the military uh, ideas over offensive ideas, you have to max this out. And the last one will, will give you force march. It is actually a very helpful thing for war. Um, what do you call it? Scorched uh, Earth. I've never done it, but basically you're destroying your own territory as people are going into it. Um, burn a colony is actually very helpful in the co uh, colonial wars. Um, and then oh, uh, this is seize a colony, and you have to be careful with this one. Uh, just a little tip here. You can seize any colony that's not formed yet. And what I mean by formed is that a colony, it, once you la launch a uh, colony, which is really easy, um, as you can see right here, this is a, you know invisible now, but this is owned by Portugal. This one's owned by, this is Spain right here, and even we can't see it. Um, but what you would do is uh, you would highlight it. And right here, this is a territory, but on the bottom would say send a, co a, co a colonist. But you have to have them unlocked. Right now, you can see we have zero colonists. You send the colonists. Once it gets to 1,000 uh, people population, it actually becomes a regular territory, just like these. And then this is what comes up. Um, but between that zero and 1,000, and it's increasing at like the rate of like 40 to 50 a year. Um, yeah, a year. Um, you could actually use your army and seize your uh, they seize the colony from somebody else if you're at war with them. Let's say we're at war with France and we come upon this territory right here that's being colonized. We can just march right over it and seize it. And now it actually belongs to us. Um, it still has the same culture as whatever France is, and we can get into cultures now, I guess. Um, Cultures, as you can see, uh, this is Austrian because we're in Austria. But here's Naples, it's Sicilian. Now it's green for Na uh, Naples, but if we were to take over Naples, uh, they would not be. Uh, see right there, it says effects if Austria controlled Naples. The local revolt risk would be uh, add two percent, tax mod modifier negative thirty three percent, missionary strength negative two percent. Man, uh, manpower modifier negative 33%. So basically you're taking a substantial hit for not having the same culture. Now there are some uh, some cultures that are um, similar, like Bavarian, right here. It's not bad as the other one, but you're still getting negative 15% tax and 15% manpower. Here are some really bad ones, just to show you. You know, oh no, this is the same, I guess. Oh, there's a gold territory. So, yeah. And then this is religion. Like, if we were to control this, oh dear lord. But, um. Yep. Where else to go? The skull. The skull on the bottom right is what's your land force limit. Now. Uh, here's your supply limit, and you can see that it says uh, to go into this territory, it says supply limit 20, okay? Um, what it means is that it can support 20 regiments. This one can support 36, 32, but we have 36. So all we have to do is just take this and hit split in half, and it will actually split in half as best it can. So 5,000 cavalry, 13,000, not just see it actually splits each regiment. And you just move them out. Now you're not going to take a manpower loss. Sure. So you move them out. And now there's no skulls. If you are attacking a country...
alliances good, marriage is even better, because then he can get personal unions, which I might get into a little bit later. But, yeah, the skulls, if you're invading a said country, the skulls will, obviously, you're taking attrition, which will show up right here, where your skull, attrition percentage. This is also a na naval ships. If you're going into the ocean, you'll get an attrition rate, and that exponentially increases to the point where you actually will lose your ships. Um, same thing right here. So, that's that. Uh, another quick stability. Uh, you can go negative 3 to plus 3, so you have a, a plus or minus range, a range of 6. Um, you can actually pay to get this increased if you use your admin power. Right now it says if we, if we use 100, we can add one level. Each one level decreases it by 1% national revolt risk, uh, adds tax, and adds strength to your missionaries. And then also increases the stability cost modifier. So if you get plus one here, the next one would be a 50% more expensive. And then the next one from there I think is 150%. But this is why the why this is stability expansion screen is very important is base revolt risk right here negative 2.88 different decisions national decisions that you make right here can affect your plus and minus uh, uh, revolt risk as well as different events that will pop up on your screen you need to keep this in the negative as best you can so if you can't well you'll have lots and lots of revolts another thing in stability and uh, expansion war exhaustion the longer you're in war and it's really not longer you're in war you could actually have a really long war and not even build up that much war exhaustion what it's really based off of is really how quickly and how many uh, losses you take if you have a hundred thousand army and you go in and you get your ass crushed and you lose a hundred thousand men your war exhaustion is just going to skyrocket. Um, you can use diplomatic power to lessen that by two points every so uh, every one. It's up from zero through two, uh, 20, but I've never gotten a 20, and uh, I think I got to 10 as England, and my god, the amount of revolts you get, I don't know how you would even survive. Um, here's colony exp expansion. Right here is the range amount of range that you can go like we can only go 160 miles from any territory which obviously is not that far um, this is uh, how many settlers go there per uh, per year and then this is how fast they can get there this one overextension is very very important we don't have any right now but if you start approaching anything more than 80 percent of overextension overextension is let's say we took over this country Bohemia one two three four five six seven territories now there's no way that we'd actually be able to uh, fully annex this country in one war but we could actually probably take all these territories right here but 20 percent 15 percent 20 percent exhaustion 15 percent 20 percent 15 uh, i'm just making those numbers up i don't even know if those are right but basically that's what it, how it adds up and if you're at like 80 percent to 100 percent you have an increased uh, revolt rate you your tax is less um and then also uh the faster you overextend affects you, your uh how the other countries look at you is how fast are you like just trying to grab territory as fast as you can it does not look good on uh, to uh, and to other nations and actually severely affects your neighborhood of relationships um, so you have to be careful on that. You want to try to keep that. If you can't, if you have to end a war and just end it and not take territory, take money, take trade power, force religion, force a personal union, force anything you can. But, um, if you have to just give up the territory, I, I might recommend it. Um, uh, because overextension will be a bitch to deal with. So we're going to unpause this and try to get this going so we can show mission finishing. Um, royal marriages offers. Increase the chance of uh, errors, which is very important to have a success rate, uh, successors to your kingdom. Uh, right here shows your admin rate of your leadership, 
So, uh, like for myself, my king has a two admin, five diplo, and one military. Um, this is your uh, legitimacy because how well people view him. And this is your diplomatic re uh, relations. Uh, how many you actually have, okay? So we have five out of six. And if you get past that, it actually will start decreasing your diplomatic power. Again, not something that you want. And it even shows you right there. Five of six diplomatic relations, it costs us zero. If you go over that, it will start costing you, and then you're not getting diplomatic power. So you have to be careful in how many relationships that you call, uh, create. Here's legit, uh, leg legitimacy. It's how well you are, uh, basically how well you control your throne. Uh, it decreases your written uh, national revolt risk. Uh, then some stuff about the true faith, heretics, heathens. That's all religion. Uh, diplomatic relation bonus. Um, this is also increased by your prestige as well as number of royal marriages. Now, the number of, uh, your prestige increases a whole crap ton. Your global trade power, morale, mercenary costs, fort defense, uh, your influence with the Pope. Uh, yeah, a lot. This is harder to keep up than this sometimes. This is almost always going up unless you have some serious problems. This will usually go into the negative and go negative per year a lot. And the one way you can keep this up is uh, colonization, expansion, battles won. Uh, you can get lots of things. There's even one of the technology or the national ideas you can get unlocked will uh, give you yearly, uh, or give you a lot of double prestige basically for each battle won. So we'll speed this up. Again, we're trying to get Burgundy to like us even more. So you can see now we're going super fast. It's about a month every 30 seconds. Um, if you actually were to play like this, uh, you would probably end this game pretty well, uh, well. I could right now do offer alliance with them and go all skyrocket up to 100. But I am trying to get double missions. Because this only gets me 50 admin power and I want to get the stability. So I just wanted to choose this one so I could show you the royal marriages. So here I can get uh, influence with the Pope, which you can open this up and you're basically voting for cardinals then. Hopefully they get uh, and go into the act of cardinals. And then these cardinals vote together in theory and then choose whoever is going to be the holy controller. Uh, the holy controller is kind of worthless. So prestige it is. Has the biggest uh, impact right away. I'm still learning this Holy Roman Empire, but the more unity you have, and since we are the Emperor, we can then control and, and enact different things. Still learning that, so uh, more to come maybe on that. So right here, we just got a call to arms, okay? So uh, Brandenburg, uh, your faithful al allies requesting your aid in the Mediburg and the Hansa. This is the war that they have started. You see, if you decline, you get negative 25 prestige. And just like what I tell you about prestige, that's the hardest one to do. So your allies, you got to make sure that you choose allies that you want to back up. But right here, you can go select, hit this, selects the country. And you can see who they're in war against, okay? And then look at them. So they're not that big of a territory, right? So hell yeah, we'll go to war with them. That's not a big problem. Now we can go to diplomatic air uh, right here. Tells us who we can uh, go attack. And now we can go send troops there. And you know what? We'll go help out this guy and go take out his freaking uh, rebels. Now, I like to slow down time during war. Because, well, war. 
as you can tell, it gets really loud. Sorry about that, guys. And then look, we went to war, but look, our trade got affected then because we went to war. And look at that. Now we're making negative seven gold an hour. Out of nowhere. Like, that's how fast. You got to make sure that you're, um, you got good ample gold stocks. So, now look, we have to go take these territories as well. Now, right here, there's our allies markings there. And you can see that the assault button is not highlighted, so we're not controlling all that siege. I'll try to keep off of those siege marks as much as I possibly can, so you... I don't kill your ears. So we are also in war with this little country. It has territory here, territory there, territory there. So we said one army there. Now you could do. Let's see if we can actually turn that down for you guys so I don't keep on killing you. Game options, audio. A little bit better. As you can see right there, uh, this button right here, I can detach enough uh, troops to just siege this. Or I can split them in half. So we're going to split them in half and send that army over there. So now they're sieging the territories. Once you start sieging, there's a percentage rate that comes up. Negative 63, negative 70. What this is, is your chance of actually assaulting and breaking through and actually seizing the territory. The longer that you wait in days and months and years, the morale will go down and different events it will happen. And the different ev events happen every 30 days. Every 30 days, a dice or die is ro uh, uh, rolled and a different uh, thing happens and gives you different values here. Okay? So it's coming up, and there we're going through phase one now. See, see, it's still phase zero. So we still only have negative two percent, negative two there from blockading. Was this? Uh, so it's just going to keep on going like this. Now the fire got uh, the uh, die got twelve, and then we get phase one. This one's still at 70. That one got dropped down to 63. This one's now 50. That's 63 now. And as you can see, this just continues. Now, you don't have to really watch that. You can just go back to your normal business if you're at war. Um, and now they accepted peace. Now, we didn't get anything out of it. But we came to the rescue of our allies. We get awarded a little bit for that. Not much. Again, split our armies. Now I want to also show you guys something else. We go into this uh, idea. This guy has some, uh, this is France, and he has ri uh, selected rivals, also enemies. Okay, so his enemies are England and uh, uh, Burgundy. But he selected rivals as well. Well, we can do that as well. Our enemies are the Ottoman Empire and Burgundy. Supposedly, even though Burgundy we're going to try to make alliance with. Do not select this at all if you want to ever try to rebuild reput uh, reputation for someone. As soon as we select this, we're going to select the, uh, the Ottoman Empire. Oh. So we're going to scroll down here through here and find Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire. Now, this is uh, basically going to be our permanent enemy. So you can select three rivals and everything. But look at this. Click here to change rival. Now we can get 25% more prestige from defeating them in battles. Uh, no trade efficiency penalty when embargoing. 20% uh, spy offense against them. And 33% diplomatic power cost for demanding provinces from them in a peace deal. So with them now selected as a rival... 
we can actually now get more out of war out of with them, which is huge. This is something that I did not know about for a very long time, and uh, it can be very useful. And now you can you can just keep on switching them, so you can almost switch them through whoever you're at, w at war with. And if you do that, you could probably save yourself some a lot of diplomatic power. Um, so we'll try to continue in on this mission. As you can see, we're going plus and negative and plus and negative. Okay, so now they just want to freaking. Oh. Yep, so they just freaking went negative for some reason. Oh, because they selected us as a rival. So, yep. As you can see, the, the tide it always changes, and there goes the mission. Because now there's no way we're going to be able to get 100 here. Um, not with right now, with the negatives and pluses it has. So, as always, this is the Flying Ross, and I hope you like this slight intro. I hope it kind of eases your way into this massive 4X strategy game. Um, and I hope it I maybe enlightened you on some of the different aspects. And maybe I'll bring you some more gameplay, but as you can see, this is really not gameplay that you can record and actually show. Because uh, I'll be recording for days and days and days. So, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you want to see any more, please uh, like and comment below. And uh, I'll see you guys later.